Hello and welcome to my second video on string algorithms. Today I want to describe to you the first of the two construction algorithms for subject trees that I mentioned last time, namely McRae's algorithm. The motivation for this is that we have our suffix tree as an extremely useful data structure with space usage and construction time in order n. So, just to recap, a suffix tree of a sequence x is a compressed tree of all suffixes of that sequence x followed by our special nth character, which in our case is the dollar sign. To build this, we do the following described in McRae's algorithm. Iteratively, for i equals 1 up to n plus 1, we build trees, ti. The in-between of 1 and n plus 1 is trees of sequences x dollar 1 up to n plus 1 and x dollar 2 up to n plus 1. And so on up to x dollar i up to n plus 1. So, t1, t2 and t3 are shown as examples below here. Now, for i equals n plus 1, ti is the suffix tree for x. The essential trick is being clever in how we insert xi up to n into ti so we don't spend order n squared all in all. First of all, let's look at some basic terminology. A common prefix of x and y is a string p that is a prefix of both illustrated as this. The longest common prefix is where p is equal to lcp of x and y. So it is a prefix such that x the length of p plus 1 is not equal to y length of p plus 1. For suffixes of x, xi up to n and xj up to n, the longest common prefix is their lowest common ancestors in the suffix of the tree. In McRae's algorithm we also have the mention of head and tail. So let head of i denote the longest longest common prefix of x i up to n followed by dollar and x j up to n followed by dollar. For all j less than i, let tail of i be the string such that x i up to n followed by dollar is the head of i followed by the tail of i. Iteration i in McRae's algorithm consists of 1. Finding or inserting the node for head i and appending tail of i. Now, the trick in McRae's algorithm is a clever way of finding head of i. For this we need a lemma. So this states that let head of i be equal to x of i up to i plus some h. Then x i plus 1 up to i plus some h is a prefix of head i plus 1. This is illustrated in this drawing. Now, to prove this, we start with the base case of h being 0. This is trivial because it would be head of i followed by the empty string. So now assume h larger than 0. Let head of i be equal to ay, so the letter a followed by a string y. By definition, there exists a j less than i such that the largest common prefix of ij is equal to ay. Thus, suffix j plus 1 and i plus 1 share the prefix y. Thus, y is a prefix of lcp, i plus 1, j plus 1, and y is a prefix of head i plus 1. Just to make this point clear, here's an illustrating stating the exact same thing. The next trick we use is to define suffix links. So we define s of u to be the empty string if u is equal to the empty string, and v if u is equal to a prepended on v. We make this a pointer from x i up to k to x i plus 1 up to k. Now I'll state a corollary. s of head of i 
is a prefix of head of i plus 1. Thus, s of head of i is an ancestor of head of i plus 1. That way we can use s of head of i as a shortcut. What we must use these for is two scan methods named slow scan and fast scan. Slow scan we use if we don't know if the string y is in t of i. Then we must search character by character. Fast scan we can use if we do know that y is in x. Then we can just jump directly from node to node. At node u, at path depth d, follow the edge with label starting with y d. Continue until we reach the end of y. Either we'll end on a node if y is in t of i, or we'll end on an edge if y is a prefix of a string in t of i. So, here's a quick sketch of how McCray's algorithm will work. We begin with the tree t1. For i equals 1 up to n, build the tree for t of i plus 1, such that it satisfy t of i plus 1 is a compressed tree for x j up to n followed by the dollar j less than or equal to i plus 1. And non-terminal nodes with the possible exception of head of i have a suffix. In each iteration we must add node i plus 1. Potentially we also add head of i plus 1. And we add tail i plus 1. And we add the suffix link from head of i to suffix of head of i. So at beginning of iteration i, let head of i be equal to uv and parent head of i equal to u. w is equal to s of u followed by v equals to s of head of i. So by the invariant, s of parent of head of i and the suffix links exist. By the lemma, w is an ancestor of head i plus 1. So we can move quickly to w, then search for head of i plus 1 starting there. An observation we need to have is that w is in t of i. Head of i is a prefix of xj up to n for some j less than i. Thus w is a prefix of x of j plus 1 up to n for some j less than i. So in this example w is a prefix of some suffix j less than or equal to i, so w is in t of i. Consequently what this means is that we can search for w from s of u using fastscan. Now that we know w is in our t of i, we need to know what if w is a node. Well, we start by updating s head of i to be equal to w. Then we search for head of i plus 1 using slow scan. And what if w is on an edge? If w is not a node, then all suffix j less than i with prefix w agree on the next letter. By definition of head of i, there is a j less than i such that suffix x i up to n and x j up to n differs after head of i. So x i plus 1 up to n must also disagree on that character. Thus head of i plus 1 must be w. So what we do is that we just add node w, update head of i to be equal to w and set head of i plus 1 to be w. Many different approaches have been made to this pseudocode but I would r much rather talk about this as a longer description that just give just a step by step walkthrough of some pseudocode. So we insert suffixes starting from the longest suffix x0 to n minus 1 followed by the dollar sign to the shortest one which is of course x n minus 1 to n minus 1. So for i equals 0 up to n minus 1 the first step is to walk to the deepest node 
with a suffix link on the path to the current node. Jump to the node pointed by the suffix link. The next step is to traverse down the remainder of head i-1. From this node by analyzing only the start of each edge. Last step is traversing down the remainder of suffix i until the matching falls out. Create a new node here with the remainder of characters labeling leaf i. So, to go into more details, the first step where we find the deepest node with a suffix link, let's call this v1. Head i-1 can then be divided into three substrings. x alpha beta. x alpha is the path label of the node v1. If no such node is found, x alpha is the empty string. Otherwise, x is the first character and alpha is the rest of the characters. If we follow the suffix link v1, we get to node v2, whose label is a. The next step we do is a rescanning of characters beta from node v2. It is certain that beta can be read from this position because head i-1 is equal to x alpha beta. x alpha beta is part of t i-1 and t i-2, which means that alpha beta is part of t i-1. Note that rescanning needs to analyze only the first characters on the edge on the path because we know that beta is part of our tree. It means that the number of steps required by rescanning is proportional to the intermediate nodes visited during the traversal of beta. Here we have to create a node, unless there already is a node at this position. So let us denote this node by d. The suffix link of the node labeled head i-1 will point to this node. Last step is the scanning phase. So let's denote the remaining part of the characters in head of i by y. The length of y is not known beforehand. Thus we have to analyze each character down the subtrees until we fall out of the tree. At the position where we fall out we create a new node and the remaining part of the suffix i will be labeled the leaf created from the new node. Note that the introduction of a unique termination symbols ensures that the matching will fall out at some stage. Now, how do we prove correctness? Well, it actually follows from the invariant. So at iteration i, we have a tree of all suffixes j less than i. After the final iteration, we have a tree of all suffixes of x followed by the dollar sign. So we have the suffix tree of x. Time and space usage is very simple. We do everything but search in constant time per suffix. So the running time is order n plus the time we take to do slow scan and fast scan. We are not using more space than time, so the space usage is the same. Now to show how much time slow scan actually uses. We use slow scan to find head of i plus 1 from w equals to s of head of i. In example, time length of head of i plus 1 minus length of head of i plus 1 for iteration i, which is shown below here. This is what's called a telescoping sum. The sum is equal to the length of head of n plus 1 minus length of head of 1 plus n. This is equal to n since head of n plus 1 is equal to head of 1, which is the empty string. Next is the rescanning known as fast scan. What is the time usage? Well, fast scan uses time proportional to the number of nodes it possesses. So we define d of v as the node depth of the node v. Fast scan increases the node depth. Following parent and suffix pointers decrease the node depth. So we have the time usage of fast scan is bounded by the total depth increases. This will require us to do an amortized analysis. For this we will need a proposition about how much the depth will actually be. So we state that the depth 
of a node v is less than or equal than the depth of the suffix link of v plus 1. So how do we prove this? Well, for any ancestor u of v, suffix link of u is the ancestor of s of v, except for the empty prefix and the single letter prefix of v. The s of u are different. So, at each step before calling fastscan, we decrease the depth by at most 2. The depth of u is the depth of head of i minus 1. The depth of w is larger than or equal to the depth of u minus 1. So that will leave us with a total decrease of 2n. The time usage of fastscan is order n, because the time usage of fastscan is bound by n plus the total decrease of depth. So, just to recap, McRae's algorithm, we iteratively build trees of suffixes of x. Using suffix links and fast scan as our tricks, we can quickly find where to insert the next suffix. By amortized analysis, the total running times becomes linear. Thank you for watching this video about McRae's algorithm. For my next video I will be discussing Wukunin's algorithm and why we actually need to have two algorithms for solving the same problem when they in fact have the same linear running time. If you have any questions about this video or suggestions for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description.